Try not to get indigestion and try not to talk too much because that takes away from eating time and decide early if I have to use the restroom because you can't like just eat casually and use the restroom in 25 minutes. You have to really decide, do I wanna take my time and maybe wait later to go to the bathroom or do I need to rush myself eating so that I have time for both? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to vlog the first day of school and all of my students coming in today. So I just wanted to do kind of a pre-car ride video right before I left for work. I can't mount my new camera in the in my Jeep, so I'm not gonna be doing like a drive and talk video. This morning, of course, something else kind of happened. My power went out in my house earlier this morning, so, I was kind of delayed in getting ready even though I'm not late or anything like that. I've been really just trying to get up, um, get ready early, get out the door so that I'm not rushed or anything like that, especially on the first day of school. So today I'm bringing in all of my supplies to set up Donut, our class guinea pig, and I'm excited to kind of share that setup process and how I bring him into the classroom and get him ready for the students for the school year. All right, so I will check back in with you guys later, maybe during my planning period, maybe after school, but I'm excited to share my first day with all of you. Hey guys, it is 3.42 after the first day of school with my 10th graders. 12th graders have not started yet. I have them for B days. So today was a really good day. Made me feel a lot better about the school year, especially after yesterday with my wedding ring my wedding ring craziness so today i really got to know my students we had a modified schedule for academic homeroom so most of our classes were shorter so i kind of just focused on getting to know the students i didn't i established some of my classroom procedures and rules but i didn't like really get into it i mostly had time to get to know the students to go through um, to give out the syllabus and kind of point out some changes from last year with the grading policy i went over a few rules that i had that i really wanted to, to focus on before next class um, but primarily it was like procedures where to turn in your papers where to get missing work if you were absent, where to pick up things, where to sharpen your pencil or charge your cell phone. The cell phone charging station really did, uh, was really popular, especially for third period because that's when students' phones are, are dying and um, they really can't make it through the day. So they were like, Miss D, where do I charge my phone? Or sorry, Mrs. Peterson now. <laughs> I have half of my class is, half of my class I had last year, so, Half of them say Miss D, half of them say Mrs. Peterson. Uh, I just respond to all of it. And they're like, Miss D, Miss Peterson, where do I charge my phone? And I say, good thing you asked because this is the charging protocol and it's at the front of the room and you need to charge it at your own risk. That really transpired well today, introducing the cell phone charging policy. And I really didn't get a chance to use my doorbell today, um, but I did click it accidentally during my first period. And all my students were like talking about their All About Me posters and all of a sudden they just stopped to look to see where the doorbell was. And that was really cool because I was like, maybe this is gonna work as my quiet signal this year. It just might. So I did want to show you guys one of my get to know you response posters. I'm pretty sure my students didn't put their name on it so you guys can look at it. Um, they, these are the movie sticky notes that they came up with for um, one of their stations. The sticky note stations that I showed you guys before. So let me just check first to make sure that there's no names on this. Yeah, so no name, so you guys can look. So the prompt was, what was a movie that you watched this summer that you would give a thumbs up? And then we, we used the thumbs up sticky note that I found at Walmart. This is some of the responses. I put the sticky notes um, on a binder clip and kind of tacked it up onto the wall so they could use it. And these are some of their responses. So they said Deadpool and Coco and The Expendables to all the boys I loved before. So this is just kind of cool because we can talk kind of about some of the movies that they saw over the summer and 
just room room to find similarities and a lot of the students found out that they watch the same movies and as more classes put more thumbs up there any students that are confused on they don't remember what they watch they'll they'll remember and say oh yeah I watched that movie too here this was funny a lot of my students um, were talking about what they would take on a deserted island and it seems like the book of matches one of course the students didn't listen to directions as well and they wrote their answers on the side as opposed to just putting a check mark next to the options see how the seasons work tomorrow um, especially with my co-teacher for 12th grade since the students will get a little bit more time with the teacher and explaining stations um, i just wanted to show you guys my objective board right now it is a little bit cramped because I have three separate objectives and agendas and homework spots for my three preps. And I do have kind of a small whiteboard next to my smart board and that kind of makes stuff cramped. So I don't know what you guys think about this. Maybe I'll move it throughout the year and have like a bigger space for it. So this is my objective board right now. I had to kind of condense my objectives here and use the, I always call it the SWABAT. Students will be able to acronym um, and kind of condense my objective. Of course, my objectives here are all the same. It's to get to know uh, my classroom rules and procedures, and their homework is to join their Google Classroom and get their syllabus signed. Um, at least my agenda, yeah, I can kind of keep into bullet points and short. So what do you guys think about my objectives? Do you think they're a little bit crammed? I would love to know your thoughts on it. So, I guess I'll talk a little bit more about my day today. I had first period and I had my honor students and they were really quiet and sweet and polite and it went great. And then I also, for second period, I had my collaborative team meeting for 10 where we talked about kind of like our pre-assessments and post-assessments for our SLOs and making sure we get our data in on time etc etc and which were and the highlight of the topic for today was which rubric we were going to use for critiquing writing and giving feedback versus what rubric we'd use for the quarterly so another thing that is kind of new this year that i have to get used to is the lunch schedule is no longer 30 minutes it is now 25 minutes which means i have to eat very quickly and try not to get indigestion and try not to talk too much because that takes away from eating time and decide early if I have to use the restroom because you can't like just eat casually and use the restroom in 25 minutes. You have to really decide, do I want to take my time and maybe wait later to go to the bathroom or do I need to rush myself eating so that I have time for both and throw in maybe respond to some text messages to your family throughout the day or your husband and talking at the table about how your day went just I just feel like 25 minutes isn't enough but I'm also spoiled because I know what it feels like to have a 30 minute lunch and I think for high school it usually is 25 and I'm just spoiled but I'm just kind of getting used to the whole short lunch thing but I am so grateful that I have first and second period planning first uh, second period on A days and first period on B days I don't have to like pull in to school and run into my classroom and immediately teach on B days which is nice and then A days I have that like first period of, of sweet children to kind of like you know start my lesson with and adapt and all this stuff and then I have a break to kind of reorganize and change my lesson if it didn't go so well first period so yeah so my get to know you posters turned out really well. My students actually most, I think all of them, but some of my students in fourth period did them, which was really nice. Uh, they didn't think it was cheesy or anything like that. It's amazing if you give high school students stickers what they can come up with. Don't ever think that your students are too big or too old or grown for stickers and shiny things and glitter and all that stuff. They really love it deep down. So those turned out really well. I'm probably gonna laminate them and hang them from the ceilings or I'll put them outside my wall so that the parents for back to school night tomorrow will be able to see it. So yeah, I'm, I feel really blessed to have most of my students back from last year. And I also have, I think some of my 12th graders 
that I taught two years ago in 10th grade. So it really makes a difference that I already have relationships with these students because really at the end of the day, classroom management and behavior problems is always managed with student-teacher relationships and building that rapport with the kids in the background so that, you know, if a kid's talking, you can just be like, hey, Joe, stop talking. You know, Miss D, Miss Peterson is talking now. You know, that's just rude. And the kid's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Miss P, Miss D. You know, that was rude of me. As opposed to, like, who are you to talk to me? Who, you know, what does this teacher think, who does she think she is and all this stuff? And, and because they're young and they're teenagers and they have this this struggling sense of self-esteem, they always have to make sure that they're not being put down. All that stuff gets eliminated that first year or even that first semester having them. Now I can actually teach them right off the bat without them already trying to establish dominance or, or you know, disrespect or anything like that. So I'm really blessed this year to get that. So tomorrow I have my co-taught babies for the first time. I have, like I said, I've not, I think I might've said in the past, I have not co-taught since my student teaching year when I co-taught 11th grade. So I'm really excited to kind of see how it runs. I'm, I'm just want to make sure that I'm not, that I'm sharing the floor well, I would say, with, with my co-teacher. You know, I just don't want to be that hog that's always trying to take over the lesson. So I will definitely be vlogging just to see how that whole thing goes and you know being reflective on how I can make adjustments and being a better co-teacher in particular since that's not something that I've been practicing since I got out of college. I only keep you guys posted. All right guys that wraps up my vlog for today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. In the comment section below tell me what you'd like to see in the future of these vlogs. I really enjoy vlogging daily as a reflective teaching practice um, but if, there, if there's things that you think that you would really like to see me do or try out in my classroom or if you want to talk about seating charts or classroom management, leave a comment below of what you'd like to see in the future. I will be sure to respond to you and uh, make sure that I look at that and discuss that in my future videos. So remember, learn often, teach well. I will see you next time.